discussion. We've today. been talking this week about a troubling trend that we uncovered in local school district, despite the fact that we've seen more instances of, of inappropriate, even illegal contact between teachers and students that often starts on social media. Many don't have a policy for social media. Yeah, but yesterday on the now, we learned that that could soon change. I have put in a uh, draft bill request uh, to do such a thing to uh, require that school districts uh, do put a, a, a policy on their books uh, that uh, govern social media interaction between staff and students, uh, really because it's very important to protect students and staff uh, from any gray areas. I think that's very important. That was State Representative Adam Zemke announcing that he plans to introduce a bill that would require school districts to have a social media policy. Now, of course, social media can be a very useful tool inside the classroom. Nobody denies that. And when students are at home, but it also provides ways for teachers or coaches to privately interact with students beyond anybody watching. Right. Representative Zemke's bill would not dictate, he says, what a policy needs mm -hmm. to say, just that he would like to see that all districts have one. So that's what the law would require. Joining us now, Kathy Hayes, the executive director of the Michigan Association of School Boards, and Sandra York, executive director of the Michigan PTA. Thank you both for joining us here today. So you've heard the representative planning to introduce this bill as soon as within a couple of weeks. What do you think about that? And we'll start with Kathy first. Uh, well, I think it's a it's a great idea. I think uh, oftentimes school districts don't realize that there's a problem in their policies that something is missing because the issue hasn't really. Uh, entered into their their districts, so this will really bring the issue to the forefront. And uh, as long as there is a mandate there, I think school districts then will have the flexibility of designing the policy that best works for their district. Which the representative said he wanted to respect the local control that school districts have and not dictating what those policies need to say. But before we talk maybe more about what you would like to see in those policies, Kathy Sandra, I'd like to ask you as the executive director of the Michigan PTA, you work with parents and you work with teachers. What are your thoughts on having a law on the books requiring districts to act? I agree that we need a law on the books. I think it's unfortunate as adults working with children that we have to do that. But the reality is that even though the vast majority of educators are extremely protective of children, there are some out there that cross lines that shouldn't be crossed. Yeah, Sandra, I was going to interrupt you really quickly. We've been hearing from some teachers who believe that just the thought that we need to have this policy is an indictment on their integrity. Do you see it like that? Are, are we attacking teachers, not trusting teachers? Well, I, I think we have to look at it a little bit differently. It isn't about attacking teachers, it's about protecting children. And if we will acknowledge the fact, again, that the majority of teachers are on the right side of this, that there are some that aren't, and we can't walk forward burying our head in the sand for those you know, handful of, of teachers that are doing something that is absolutely inappropriate. Um, so, yeah, we, we do need to go ahead and take a step that guarantees children are protected. And I think the, I think the vast, again, the vast majority of teachers are going to step up and say, you know what, I know I'm good with what I do. I know most of my colleagues are, but if there's somebody out there who's doing something they shouldn't be, we need to stop them. Yeah, we also know that not even the best policy will stop someone if they are intent, obviously, on, on crossing that line. But just important to have in place. Kathy, I wonder um, what your thoughts would be on what you would like to see districts adopt. And will the Michigan School Board, the Association of School Boards, maybe even come up with a draft policy to say, hey, here's one that you may want to consider? Right. We actually have a model policy that when a district requests a model policy for their social media um, policy in their district, that there, there is one that we send out and we're happy to continue to do that. Um, I, I think what's important is uh, what Sandra is talking about, that when you cross that line where it becomes a personal network that you're working in and you're, you're contacting students in a personal way, uh, that's when we run into problems. You know, this, is, this policy not only protects students, but it really does protect teachers explain too. So that. I think most teachers would understand. Yeah, explain what, because what, we've sorry. talked about that the last couple of days. I think that's an important point to bring up. When you say it protects teachers, in what way? Well, if, if in any way uh, uh, they have been accused of doing something that may not be accurate, 
um, if they are staying in that public domain, the school district has control and can really monitor what's going on in, in the uh, social media network. So it's, it's, it's also a way that uh, teachers can make sure that they don't cross that line and, and that uh, if there is anything that is questionable, there is definitely a way of, of accounting for that and tracking that information. Now, Sandra, we're talking a lot about what uh, teachers need to do, what school boards need to do, but how about parents? You represent parents also. What parents, what should parents be doing? What's their responsibility? Well, it, it's clear that parents need to understand that their primary role is to be a parent and not a buddy to their children. That, that, that can be part of the picture, and certainly as your children get older and move out on their own, that, that whole relationship trans, often transitions into more of a friendship um, where you get to know each other. But when children are younger, as a parent, as an adult, even you know, around children, we need to make sure that we are helping them grow. They're at a very vulnerable age then, and an adult um, sort of putting attention their way seems like flattery. It's not necessarily a healthy, it's a healthy thing, but, but, it, it, but it's a matter of a child's mentality at that age and what their development is. And at that time, I'm sure they feel far more mature. All of us did at that age. We thought we were much more worldly than we are. Okay, let and me the interrupt you for mm -hmm. one second. Sure. I'm sorry, just because we are just about out of time. Okay. But, uh, Kathy, I just have to ask you quickly, will the Michigan Association of School Boards endorse this legislation by Representative Zemke? Yes, we would. 25th. You would. And it should be introduced, we believe, in mid-July. So we'll stay on top of it. We thank both of you for your time and your input on this this afternoon. Thank you.